So today, I think we wanted to start with um, a stock valuation that was requested by uh, one of our subscribers. And I think the ticker is MMM. And usually I think you pronounce it triple M or 3M. Well, how, how do you call it? Yeah, 3M. I 3M. think it's the name of the company. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so as usual, um, I want to uh, just share the screen, the, the valuation um, screen that we usually use. And uh, first yeah. of all, maybe, you know, the subscriber, I think, is interested in it because also of the, um, the dividend um, of this company. Right. Uh, but also, right. what do they do, actually? What are, we, what are we actually talking about, Guy? It's a, it's a manufacturing company. Uh, it's a very old one. Uh, it operated since 1902, so more than 100 years. It has very, very famous R&D uh, laboratories, and it, it operates on uh, four segments, like in industrial, transportation, healthcare, consumer. Um, I think that, uh, like recently with the COVID, uh, uh, you know, pandemic, uh, many of the masks were 3M masks. Uh, but they have thousands or, or even maybe tens of thousands products. So it's, it's a very diversified uh, company with a lot of products. Um, and so as usual, we start with the uh, current price, which is at $138 per share. Uh, the number of share outstanding is around, what, 570 million shares. Million. Yeah. Uh, they had a return on assets around 12%, return on total capital of around 20%, and return on equity of 35%. And these, as usual, are uh, numbers from the past uh, 5 to 10 years that we average from, yeah. from value line. Uh, yeah. They have a total debt of $17 billion, but they also have, I'm, I'm, I'm just reading it right now, almost $5 billion yeah. in cash. Um, and here I see that you added a few more uh, metrics or parameters like the yes. deceleration, yeah. compression, time horizon, and dividend model. So can you maybe explain yeah. a little bit about this? Yeah, so on, on the uh, right part um, of, of the tables before we had um, price targets, but um, getting the CAGR from those price targets uh, was kind of uh, trivial, and so um, we decided to to have a, actually a sort of automatic sensitivity analysis based on um, several scenarios. So w one scenario is is it's called here deceleration, which means uh, deceleration in fundamentals, so revenue, cash flow, etc. Uh, compression means uh, compression of the multiple in the first table and in the dividend table below it means a compression of the yield and the column called both uh, has uh, both the deceleration and compression in it so a quite a grim uh, outlook let's say this this is done because of course we don't know exactly if our predictions about future growth and multiples and so on are correct and so we want to, to have a more conservative forecast okay and then as and, usual i read here um your um, numbers again from from value line and these are from the past five to ten years i you, you you're showing that they have been growing yeah. the revenues at three percent annually um, yeah, yeah. Their cash flow at five percent, their earnings at five percent, and the book value has remained constant. And so far, or actually still in the past, they've had multiples of two point five, fourteen, eighteen, and eight. Uh, these are not um, super inflated numbers. Uh, I think maybe a little bit the earnings per share could look slightly inflated, and maybe also the yeah. cash flow, but we've seen much worse um, so far. Yeah, yeah. And then in terms of the, uh, the current multiples, also these are in, in lines. Um, and um, regarding the future, so the numbers in, in red, which is what you forecast, I see that you're basically just forecasting that the growth um, will be very similar 
to the growth that they had in the yeah. past. Uh, I think it's a modest um, growth, but um, right. they are also, um, you know, a, a pretty established company in, in a way, right? I mean, their yes. uh, their market cap is not crazy. I mean, we're talking about seventy eight billion mm. uh, dollars, but uh, they are they are a very established um, company. Uh, so maybe here one question would be uh, because usually you know we are we are conservative um, and so right. usually we cut the the growth um, from the past by you know a factor of two sometimes or maybe just twenty yeah. percent. So here, what's the yeah. idea behind uh, you know assuming a growth that remains constant? Yeah, that that is similar to to the past growth. In my view, uh, th this would just be very close to the GDP growth. In this case, we, I mean, th th this should be almost automatic. Uh, so in, in one sense, I, I think that uh, th th they have a very wide moat. Uh, th this, is, this is also the, I mean, Morningstar's opinion. It's pretty clear why, right? They, they have, I just checked, 70,000 uh, products on the market. So it's very difficult, I guess, to to have their manufacture, manufacturing uh, capacity. Um, but on the other hand, they, they are in this very, as you said, established um, uh, sectors. So it, it's very difficult to grow. You know, analysts actually um, believe also that this is, this is their, their future growth. So essentially nothing changes. This is the forecast. Okay, so this means with the current uh, predictions uh, and numbers and the multiple based model that you get a CAGR at the current price of 4.8%. Um, right. And then I see that also the current dividend yield is, is it 4.3%? Uh, so it went up because of the correction Very in, high. in price yeah. uh, lately. And then by assuming yeah. a growth of 2% in the dividend, this dividend yield would uh, converge to 3.3%, um, which would make sense um, for such a company that uh, has had a, a yield, an average yield of 2.7% uh, in right. the past. And so in total, as we usually do, if we consider the dividend yield and the uh, CAGR just coming from the stock price, the price, we would have a total return of 8.1%, right. uh, which is... A modest, um, a modest return. Usually, we wouldn't enter um, at these kind of predictions because we would like to have more margin of safety. Uh, but right. of course, this is a, a is it a, a dividend champion or some sort of? Uh... Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So in this case, I think the investment could be also justified just just because you do. Um, you do want a dividend and you know that this company is going to pay you a dividend and, and that, that's, you know, a, a return that you can just take for granted. And then on top of that, you can also take the CAGR coming from the, uh, the price growth. Of course, I think if you are not invested in it, maybe you might, uh, based just on, the, on these numbers, you might just want to wait a little bit more if the price drops. But maybe before I say anything more, we should uh, or we could, uh, I don't know what you think, we could look at the DCF model. Okay, okay. So let's, let's take the DCF. So in the DCF, again, I, uh, I added, you know, deceleration, compression, both on, uh, uh, on top of the base case. But essentially, they are the same DCFs as, as before with different assumptions. The, the, the only slight difference that um, I started to use is that instead of taking the free cash flow per share, like the most recent free cash flow per share, I, I take this stable free cash flow per share, which, which is essentially like a linear regression of the last few years. Because, you know, with, with COVID, many metrics have ballooned and some companies have, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the free cash flow went uh, way off, either on the upside or on the downside. So I, I think that taking a, a, a stable initial point is, is quite important. So, but in any case, in, in this case, it's um, the, the free cash flow, it's $11 and uh, it's more or less uh, the, the, the last one. The last one is, is pretty good. 
these numbers that, that we see here are essentially in line with the cash flow numbers that we used in the, in the multiple models. E even though, of course, the difference is that in the multiple model, we use the cash flow, which is operating cash flow. Uh, here, we use the free cash flow uh, because the DCF should, should use the free cash flow. But in any case, so we uh, essentially assume uh, a, an initial growth of 5% that slows down up to two. In this case, uh, we get a total return that in the base case, it, it's 4% if we go down. So basically, so, I, have to, I have to interpret this as the, 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 the return in the base case, will, so the Kager, based on this mm -hmm. uh, DCF model, is 4.2%, mm -hmm. with 3.8% mm -hmm. coming from growth and well, 0.4% mm. coming from the discount that you have um, at, the, at the current mm. price. So this is also in line with the multiple based model, right? Yeah, maybe it's slightly, I mean, it's, it's half of what we had there. So yeah, this is more conservative. But you're not, um, are you taking into account the dividend the yield here or, or no? No, but the dividend is paid out of the free cash flow. So it's included by definition, essentially. Okay, so when you do a DCF model, even if the company pays a dividend, that's included, of course. And so you don't have to worry about then summing it to the dividend yield. Okay, so what's, what's our conclusion on, um, on, three, on three M's? The, the conclusion is that uh, they, are, they don't seem to be overvalued. And but uh, as well, they don't offer much growth going forward. On the other hand, um, they're a dividend aristocrat, and their dividend is pretty stable. It's very reasonable to assume that this will continue to be the case. And so I think that if one is a dividend investor, this is a good company to consider. But if one is a growth at reasonable price kind of investor, this company doesn't offer, or it seems not to offer, enough growth. Uh, so of course, if the, you know, if the price goes down 50%, then this, uh, on a, this average CAGR of 7% becomes 14 in the next 10 years. And so things uh, may, change considerably and I, okay. I would buy that yes yes that i mean this, this makes sense i mean it always depends on i guess what you're looking for on the price um and yeah. okay but cool. at, for, at current price yeah the k guard is predicted to be below the average market broad market sounds good uh, then i guess this uh term. you know concludes three uh, m's for today uh, this was, as we said, a request from one of our subscribers, and um, I think this could be useful. And as we said also other times, just let us know um, if you want to um, receive feedback or stock valuations uh, for part particular companies that you are interested in, because, you know, most likely this will also be of interest to us. Um, and also just discussions on more general topics, I guess, not, not just stock valuations, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, guys, then thanks for today, uh, for this uh, 3M, and uh, let's move on to the next uh, stock, okay? Yeah, bye, Matt. Bye.